throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. Legends of monstrous beasts are plentiful across the world, but arguably, none are more famous than the mighty dragon. Lurking in dark caverns within the earth, flying high above the world, or swimming beneath the ocean waves, dragons appear in nearly every culture spanning the globe. From the fire-breathing menaces of medieval Europe, to the wise and elegant entities of the Far East, from Kongamato in the jungles of Africa, and Ladan, who guards the Garden of the Hesperides, to the horned serpents of Native American legends, and to the basilisk of Roman mythology. Some breathe fire, some control water, some have wings while others slither upon the ground. Some are venomous, and some have multiple heads. Though the dragon may vary from legend to legend, its image is unmistakable, inspiring both awe and fear of eager story listeners. A number of theories exist on just how so many vastly distant cultures could all have legends of creatures so similar in appearance and action. Some believe the early discovery of dinosaur fossils may have begun the legends. Others believe the inherent human fear of snakes and other powerful reptiles were the source, only to be amplified in mythology. Whatever their origins, dragons across the world share a number of distinct traits. They are large and imposing, have predominantly reptilian features, and have great, often destructive powers. The earliest legends of dragons feature them as embodiments of chaos, who would end up battling powerful gods. The primordial dragon Tiamat of Babylonian mythology battles the sun god Marduk, who slays her and from her corpse creates heaven and earth. Apophis from Egyptian mythology lurks in the underworld and battles Ra and other gods to stop the sun from rising, in order to plunge the world into darkness. In Persian mythology, the god Araman creates Azidahaka as a means for mass destruction before it is stopped by the fire god Atar. In the Book of Revelations, the Hebrew god battles Leviathan at the end of the world. From their earliest incarnations, Dragons were instantly regarded as immensely powerful and dangerous foes. In time, dragons would develop a habit of guarding valuable treasure, whether in the service of another, such as the Colchian dragon who guarded the Golden Fleece, or out of personal greed, such as Fafnir, who was slain by Sigurd. Tales of dragons would go on to depict them as the ultimate challenge for heroes, and would give rise to stories of dragon slayers, brave warriors who fearlessly battled these monsters, rescuing countries, rescuing damsels, and stealing the treasures kept in their caverns. In English folklore, Sir Maurice de Berkeley battled the wyvern of Bistern. The Greek and Roman hero Hercules battled and slew a number of dragons, most notably the Lernian Hydra. Thor, the Norse god of thunder is said to battle Jormungand, the Midgard serpent, during Ragnarok. Over time, dragons of the West would garner defining features of massive wings, powerful limbs, a whip-like tail, and the ability to breathe fire. These legends are believed to have come to life from the epic of Beowulf and this image would go on to become the quintessential form of dragon, appearing in Arthurian legend and countless fairy tales. With the rise of Christianity, dragons represented not only the natural world and all of its chaos, but they embodied paganism, evil, 
and even the devil himself. No longer seen as merely fearsome beasts, they were given traits of avarice, gluttony, and fiery wrath. To defeat a dragon was considered a Christian duty. St. George of Cappadocia saved a maiden and her village from a dragon in return for their conversion to Christianity. The Lambton Worm's origins stem from a man skipping church on a Sunday. Tarask, the offspring of Leviathan, was subdued by St. Martha with holy water. La Gaguil was defeated by St. Romanus, who proceeded to mount the creature's head on the church, becoming the first gargoyle. As dragons of European legend continued to be seen as monsters to be vanquished, the dragons of Eastern legend are considerably different. While still depicted as massive, serpent-like creatures of great power, they are revered and honored, often depicted as companions or mounts to their gods, and were sometimes even gods themselves, associated with water and the forces of nature. In China, the dragon is called the Lung, and has long been an important symbol of imperial authority, with many emperors claiming dragon ancestry. The Chinese Lung is depicted as being whiskered with fish-like scales, antler-like horns, four legs, and a feathery tail, creating the basic template for other dragons throughout Asia, from the Korean Yong to the Bakunawa of Filipino lore. Japanese mythology tells of the Ryu, which, like the Chinese Lung, were symbols of great power and associated with all bodies of water. The Japanese god of the sea, Ryujin, is depicted as a large dragon. Though some dragons were still seen as vicious adversaries, such as Vitra of Hindu legend, Yamata no Orochi of Japanese mythology, and the dragons that battled Sun Wukong in Chinese mythology, dragons remained creatures of vast importance and honor representing the embodiment of the natural world in all its serenity and all its danger. But dragon legends are also found far from Europe and Asia. But like their old world counterparts, they represent the natural world in all its glory and all of its terror. Painted upon the cliffs above the Mississippi River in Alton, Illinois, is the painted image of a monster called the Piasa or Piasaw bird, depicted with a large scaly body, bat-like wings, talons like a bird of prey, a long fish-like tail, sharp antlers, a man-like face, and an appetite for human flesh. According to an account by John Russell of Shirtleft College, the Piasaw continuously wrought devastation to indigenous tribes of the area until its defeat at the hands of Chief Uatoga. Though Russell's account is hotly debated whether or not it was a true legend of the Alini people, or just a fantasy crafted by Russell himself, this story directly echoes the myths of dragons and dragon slayers of Europe, and the Piasaw itself remains an example of an American dragon. Further south in Mexico, exist legends of the flying, feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl of Aztec mythology. Whereas Piasa resembled the dragons of Europe in both appearance and behavior, Quetzalcoatl was more akin to the dragons of Asia, acting as a benefactor of mankind, gifting them with agriculture, writing, and so much more. After a turbulent time in the mortal world thanks to another god, Quetzalcoatl left Earth and became the Morning Star, leaving his followers waiting for his return. With legends surrounding them all over Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, and the Americas, it can be assumed that dragons have ruled the Earth for millennia. It remains an intriguing mystery. How could so many cultures, separated by such vast distances, Creep monsters so similar in appearance and behavior to one another. Could dragons have actually existed? 
Could dragons still exist hidden to the world today? While we may never know the answers to these questions for sure, dragons live on in our imaginations and enjoy a popularity in modern fiction as dangerous beasts, as faithful and loving companions, and as sinister villains. It is safe to assume that dragons, in all their shapes and sizes, are history's most famous monsters.